Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down. And you're acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. that psalm. Mm. <clears throat> psalm 139 is um, still about the amazing um, it's how God is so intricately involved with our lives, with our creation, with everything everything about us. There's not a moment that he doesn't see. That's true. Nothing. And um, I just love that. So, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm Ruth, and this is Gil, and uh, I think you probably know us by now, but just in case. <laughs> and um, we're really enjoying doing these, uh, doing these webcasts and having the opportunity to talk about um, um, some of the things that are specifically connected with, with the Hebrew months, because there always seems to be something going on. <laughs> Uh, it's the thing I've the thing I've noticed. There's all there was always some kind of focus, which gives a, a wonderful rhythm to life. I mean, we have the the basic rhythm of of Shabbat that comes around every week. Right. I 
I love that. I love the, the rhythm of that. And because certainly uh, growing up in, in that sort of Western Christian civilization where we've, <laughs> we've pretty much lost the sense of that rhythm, and it seems that we can spill over from seven days to seven days to seven days without really ever stopping and feeling that somehow we can't stop. So that's one of the rhythms. But then there's this it's rhythm. Like, um, we have cycles. Yeah, it's like it's you just... have the, the, the cycle of the week and then you have, you know, the months, like mm -hmm. how each month has uh, like something to teach us, like yes. a, a special thing to that it carries. Yeah. And then we also have the years, you know, we have this cycle of let's say every every six years, every every seven years we, we base it every six years, you know, on the seventh year is a, is a Shemitah, yeah. it's, yeah. a, it's a Shabbat for the yeah. land. Um, so it goes, it goes in cycles, and, and, but every time, you know, because, you know, this is the month of Adar. This is my, what, 32nd Adar in my life? Uh -huh. and, and, like, every time you learn something new. It's not like a, I mean, it's never like, like it was before. You know, the whole, the, the whole uh, purpose is for you to, um, to go higher, You know, mm. to go higher and that your soul basically progresses and you can understand new things every year when the month comes. So celebrating Hanukkah, for example, in the month of Kislev is not like any other Hanukkahs you've had in your past because cause you've grown in a year and you can learn something new. Mm. And you can teach something new, maybe. Um, so it's, it's all about that. And if we even think of, you know, the, the days... You know, the, I mean, the days of the week. So, I mean, every week we need to feel some sort of, of progress, you know, in, in, in who we are, in what we are, what we're doing. And um, it's a life story, basically. Well, sometimes we get so caught up in the days. That one <laughs> so just, much, yeah. Yeah, you know, one just rolls on yeah, into the other sure. and one week into the other. So, sure. it's, uh, so I know that we're in the month of Adar. Right. This is the month of Adar, but, but more correctly, this is the, the Adar Aleph. So it's the first Adar. We basically are going to have a second Adar okay. in a month's time. So we have two months of Adar this year but, in particular. But we don't always have two months. Uh, no, not all the time. How often does it happen? The Jewish calendar has uh, 12 months, okay, right. regularly, 12, just like the, the, the English one. Um, but, uh, but, but because of the fact that we are committed to make sure that Pesach always takes place in the spring, okay? And we know that the seasons of the year, uh, they go by, by the sun, right? Mm -hmm. So in, in, in a solar year is uh, 30, 365 days, mm -hmm. right? But, in the Jew but, but a, a lunar year, like the, a year which goes by the moon, like the Jewish year, has only 354 days, so we're missing 11 days. Uh -huh. So we're basically making up for it in a, in a rotation of uh, every three, three years, years, like more or less three. It's like three years, yeah. three years, and then two. Right. And to to bridge up I mean, the gap because you know the, uh, our year basically falls behind with uh, with the regular year with the with, with the seasons basically, and we are committed. You know the first command that we got before even Mount Sinai, okay, this was when we were still in Egypt, mm -hmm. okay, the night of the last uh, plague, right, right? Uh, of, the, of the, the plague of the, of the firstborn sons, mm -hmm. that night, when God took them out of Egypt, you know, and like all, all those miraculous things happened, you know, the hand of God, basically, right before the hand of God took them out, there was a pause, and God is giving them their first command as a people, This was before they even got, before they even went out of Egypt, mm -hmm. okay. And the first, uh, and the first uh, command that they're getting is in Exodus 12. I can almost find it quickly. Um, God is saying, "Hachodesh azel lachem, rosh chodeshim, rishon hu lachem lechodesh hashana." Okay, this is in Exodus 12, verse 2. Right. Okay, and he's basically saying this month to you is, a head of, is the head of all months. Okay, this is the first month for the whole, in, in, like in the entire year. Okay, mm. and this is a command. <coughs> yeah, we need to make sure that, that this would be that. So we set our calendar according to that month, the month of Nisan, which is in two months. Mm -hmm. yeah, but we also, and we also know that in other places in the scriptures that it has to take place in the spring. So in order to do that, every, let's say, three years almost, 
we add an extra month. Okay, other uh, if we don't do that, then Pesach is not going to fall in in springtime. So this year is actually a year like that, which we which we add another another one. So we basically have thirteen months this uh, this year. So interesting. So um, in fact, Nissan is in. in in a sense, in God's calendar, Nis- mm-hmm. Nisan is the first month. It is. It's definitely the the, the first month, and, and even though even though you and, it, and, and also everything relates to that. You know, right. like the counting. You know, the, the the heavenly counting of the months. Let's say when we are being spoken about, um, you know, the celebrating all the other festivals like Shavuot, which is like mm-hmm. Pentecost, or Rosh Hashanah, and Yom Kippur. Sukkot, um, all these dates are given. Also, by the way, afterwards in the scripture, in the in the prophets, you know, when they talk about the different fasts that we need to make, you know, mm-hmm. uh, in memory of things that happened, all these things, they it, it always says, you know, you shall celebrate this on the third day, or let's say the sixth day of the third month. Right. The third month is, of course, the third month from Nisan, from the month of Pesach, because Pesach mm-hmm. is the beginning, and then the third month after, that's mm-hmm. the month of Sivan. Let's say when we talk about uh, Rosh Hashanah, you know, we call it Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year, but it's not really the head of the year. No. It's the head of the more or less civil year. Right. You know, it's like our January, right. let's say. Um, so uh, can I ask a question? In, like for, um, say, people, people living in Israel mm-hmm. that are not really aware of God's months, would they? Would the average person be aware that, that Rosh Hashanah isn't actually... It's not the, the first month, it's, it's, it's really the seventh the one. Month. It's yes. the seventh one. Well, they, uh, let's say if somebody picks up a Bible for the first time in his life, yes. okay, and he reads from it, and then he sees that, that God is talking about... Pe- that he would see, let's say, a day saying the seventh month, so he would think that be a different month of, yeah, of what exactly. it, of what, so it, what could it get really quite is. Confusing. Everything goes according to Pesach. Now, but why did they? Why why was it changed? Do you think it's um, it's not for no it's not for no reason. I mean, they had to um, you know because of the because of the time in, in exile. Okay, they had to, to change it. I mean, because they uh, I mean the different times of the year they they symbolize different things. And it's more or less like they had their religious year and their mm-hmm. civil year, mm-hmm. more or less, not really, but but more or less. So they took the month of Tishrei, which was a very like you know it was full of holidays. In any case, so we took that that month to be that to be you know the the, the, the symbol of the beginning of the year, the civil right. year. Right. But um, but even even as we do that, um, you know the names of the month today, the these are names basically coming from Babylon. Okay, when we were in Babylon, and uh, and basically by you know two let's say calendars, one I mean the the the, the Torah based one, you know where Nisan is the first month, mm-hmm. first month, and then w- also the one uh, that we are holding today, you know with with all these Babylonian names like Tishrei, Cheshvan, Kislev, Tevet, this one Adar. Mm-hmm. Okay, basically those two things um, we hold these two calendars, but both represent the same thing. They re- they represent redemption. I mean the, uh, the 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 counting which goes by the scriptures, you know, the Nis- Nisan in which Nisan is the first one. That it, we always look back at the redemption from Egypt. Okay, that was number mm-hmm. one, and then everything relates to that, right? right? Yes. So the the the, th- the second month, the third month, the, the fourth month, all represent all basically looking back to the time when we came out of Egypt. So we always take we always bear that in mind. And the other and the other calendar with the Babylonian names that basically gives us the redemption from Babylon because we when we were yeah. redeemed from Babylon we came to the we came to the land and we built second temple mm-hmm. so we all, we always when we even you know when we say the names of the hebrew months today it always takes us back to the time where we actually left Babylon and came back to build Second mm-hmm. Temple. So both of these countings they represent the same thing. Did the did the did the months have names before? Or was it just like first no month, first second, second month, third no just like our days of the week? You know, I mean the days of the week in Hebrew yeah, when you sure. say like yeah, Sunday, yeah, yeah. we yeah. don't have Sunday, Monday, all those. We yeah. we don't have a name for the day. We just say first day, second, ma- second day, yeah. and then you have you no. Know, I mean the way I would say if, uh, Sunday it would in Hebrew. Yeah. Would also mean I'm first in line, let's say, because it means first day, so yeah. Yom Rishon. Okay. But the word Rishon also means first in general, so I can mm-hmm. say Ani Rishon, I'm first. All right. You know, so it's which we usually say, I'm first in line. Any, <laughs> any, anyone, who's, anyone who's been to Israel knows what I'm talking about. Right? <laughs> no lines, no cues, no. Um, so, 
Yeah, so that's basically that's basically that. And I think I think the most wonderful thing about it is that it was so important to God, you know, going back to what we said at the beginning. I mean, this is the the most one of the most important times of our history of, of the Jewish history in general, yeah. looking like talking about, you know, a uh, huge history, right? Maybe 3500 years. Yeah. Um, this night in which we came out of Egypt, the 14th uh, day, the 14th day of, of Nisan, mm-hmm. God stops everything just before, he's, he, just before he shows us his hand, you know, taking, a, a re- redeeming us from Egypt. Mm-hmm. And he says, well, hold your horses. I have something to say. This month is the first month of the year for you. And, like we, and, we, and we take that as a command to always make sure that our Jewish calendar would be around it. We, we take that into consideration, yeah. that, that, that Pesach would always fall in the spring, like it says so in the scriptures later. So, and this is, this is even before Mount Sinai, this is before, this is before we were actually redeemed. Mm-hmm. I, so probably this, this is a very huge thing in God's eyes. You know, the, this calendar, these cycles. When did it get set? Right there, right there. No, that to have two Adas. Like when oh, I have, the thing why about the two, two ad- 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 I guess has, um, it has to be months when I things will, are... Well right, well, right there at the beginning, because, you know, they always had to make sure that Pesach would fall in the spring, right? right? So, and, you know, they had 40 years in the desert, mm-hmm. so they probably noticed that, you know, something is happening and Pesach is not falling in the spring all of a mm-hmm. sudden. And so, so they had to come up with that. So we don't really, really know, but, but it's, it goes like long back in our history, I mean... Yeah. Yeah. It goes so back that we don't even... I can, can't tell you like a date when it started. It just started when everything started. It's part of our... So is there anything specific in Adar? Of course. Well, Adar has... Uh, so usually whenever we have one Adar, so yeah. and right in the middle of Adar we have the, the holiday of Purim. Mm. And Purim, that's the story of uh, the Scroll of Esther. Esther, yeah. And, uh, which is an amazing, amazing book in the Bible. Mm. We'll talk um, about that next time. Right? We'll talk about that next Ooh. month. Yeah, okay. exactly. Which is the second month of Adar. And yeah. so whenever we have one Adar, of course, we celebrate it in that time. But when we have two Adars, it's always the second one that in, in which we celebrate everything. Mm-hmm. So, for example, Leah and I, we got mm-hmm. married on a year of, with 13 months. Uh-huh. So our wedding anniversary is actually the 28th of Adar Aleph, the first Adar. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But even when we have, let's say this year, for example, like every other year, because we always, we celebrate things, occasions, birthdays, everything, we go according mm-hmm. to the Jewish calend- calendar. So even when we have a year in which we have two Adars, we still celebrate it on the second Adar. The second Adar is the one that counts. It's the one. So the first Adar is a kind of... Is a kind, it's kind of, of like a free... It's... Um, well, well, okay, when I was in university, okay, they taught us this uh, term. I don't know if it, if it holds. Uh, pseudo or... Uh, pseudo? Yeah, like something that doesn't have... It's just, uh, it's just there, you know. Yeah. It's, it doesn't hold any, any specific meaning. Yes. Um, so, Interesting. Yeah, it's, a month, it's, it's just a month to fill in the gap. Right. Um, but uh, but of course it has. Um, but for example, if somebody if someone was born on the first month of Adal, in later in later years, whenever he want, he or she wants to celebrate their birthday, mm-hmm. they would do it on the second Adal right. because that's the one that counts. But it's kind of when you say that it's 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 just a month when it's filling in the gap. I, I was just thinking when you said that that it's very special because it's filling in the gap because of being obedient to what God has asked. So, so sometimes it, it's like those, it's like those moments in our lives where we, we have, we we've heard Him say something, but it's not going to be. There's a sort of filling in time that we it's, have it's, to. It's we a have very to active. Agree. It's it makes you be very active in 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 keeping God's word. You mm-hmm. know, because He said, you know, He could have made. Pesach ha- falling in the spring all the time, mm-hmm. right? Why do we need to do all this? You know, he could have he could have made yeah. the moon be in like totally in sync, you know, with the sun, and then we, right. we're not going to have all that. We don't have to do all this crazy mathematics of how to do it because it, it's a, it's it, it's really it really is a complicated thing to do. But but he didn't. He wanted us to do it. Mm-hmm. He wanted us to be part of it and to be active. And he's not going to give you what what you want or what you think you want, what you need. 
uh, without you making a, making doing something for it. Yes. You know, it's not going to fall from heaven all the time. And that maybe and that basically really takes us to the next topic I wanted to talk yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. Do you want to sing something before? Um, we can. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Um, this is one of our. This is one of our favorite songs, and we we sing it on our now weeks, don't we? Yeah, it's um, one that we found that is really speaks about. It really speaks about actually that that whole place of of trust, and f- that whatever comes, that that we're going to say, "Bless the Lord." And uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not I'm not I'm not an expert in 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 um, translate translating the Bible. But I think this song is always very much based on a very specific psalm. I mean, it's, it doesn't take the words in particular, but this thing about, you know, bless, bless the Lord, O my soul, right, um, is one of the psalms that talks about, you know, nature and how, how God created nature, how he created the world, and how every, every, and each animal has something to eat. And it's a, it's, it's a beautiful psalm. It's a beautiful psalm yeah. that I like very much. I think it's Psalm 95. If I'm not mistaken, um, and and this one, I think this one is based on it, and and it really, this song really takes us also to the next topic that I wanted to talk about uh, this time. Yeah. So it's, uh, I'm, not, I'm sure, if, I'm not sure if it's the same place where there's that verse that um, says, uh, "The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord." Exactly. And uh, well, that's. For me, that's one of the most true statements we can say before God. Lord, you give, you take away.
got froggy in my throat there. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Okay, so, so the <laughs> next thing I yes, wanted to I talk know. about yeah. um, is the fact that... Okay, do you remember like two months ago <clears throat> in, uh, when we did the webcast about Hanukkah? Mm -hmm. um, we talked about, you know, we had a song there talking about miracles, yes, remember? Yes. And that's all. Yeah, yeah. So we talked about miracles and, you know, we, we, we praise God enough you know, for the miracles that He that he is doing for us. And, and I want to talk about miracles a little bit, you know, because we mm. say the same, we have the same, let's say, uh, we have the same prayer, Al Hanisim, over the miracles. Mm -hmm. um, we say we say it only, only twice a year. We say it in Hanukkah and we say it in Purim. And Purim is basically the, the month of Adar, is the month of Purim. Yes. And I, I wanted to maybe talk about that because, you know, we, we you know, Purim is not a regular, um, if, we, if you read the book of Esther, we read about Mordechai, and we read about Esther, and we read about Achashverosh, the king, and we read about Haman, we read about his sons, and we read about his wife, and many, many people. Who is not in the book of Esther? God doesn't, yeah. Feature. We don't no. have the, the yeah, name yeah. of God, yeah. doesn't appear even once in the book of Esther. Mm -hmm. It's only once implied. And we, we can talk, we can talk about that maybe next mm -hmm. month, but it's yeah. only implied one time. Mm -hmm. I think it's the beginning of the fourth chapter, where, or maybe the fifth chapter, when it says that on that night, the sleep of the king, the king could not sleep. I don't know exactly the translation mm -hmm. for it. Do you know what, mm -hmm. I'm, do you know what yes. I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. right? Like after the party that Esther mm -hmm. was there? And the, the king could not sleep. And of course, talking about Achashverosh, right? Mm -hmm. The king of that time. But in, in the Hebrew text, the, um, you know, the definite article, Ha, mm -hmm. when, when we talk about the king, yes. we have it very, very capitalized. That's, that's how it was. It was mm -hmm. originally written by Mordechai. You know, Mordechai wrote the book of Esther. Right. Uh, presenting it as a history book to the king, right. so he couldn't write the name of God in it because it it, it was all under, like like supervised by Hashavuros, yeah. but he did do something to imply that you know who was the king that could not sleep that yeah. night, mm -hmm. and so uh, one who neither slumbers nor sleeps. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So so, but the name of God is not there, and you know we talk about the miracle, but it looks like there is no miracle in the book of Esther. What is the miracle exactly? Everything was run by nature, you know? People could say, it's not like, the, it's not like in Hanukkah, where you had, you know, the, the tin of oil, which was, which was supposed to last only one day, and it lasted eight days, and that's why we have eight days of Hanukkah. Mm -hmm. It's not like, you know, that's a miracle. You know, we, you can't, I mean, it's, it's against nature, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like you have the, the sea, you know, being torn, to, and you have a corridor just to walk in, in, mm -hmm. in, in, in the middle of the sea. It's not like you have the ten plagues, and you don't see any voices like in Mount Sinai. People could be in, in Persia at that time, and say, what a coincidence! Right. They could. Um, this this could be what happens even now, because there are times. I mean, I think when the the more aware you are of God's presence in your life and of God working in your life and God working in the circumstances in your life, the more inclined you are to recognize. The things that he does on your behalf, and we and we and, say, and "Wow, that, and that what a miracle!" Well. And that we, you know, we might say, "What a miracle!" But then somebody looking from the outside, who doesn't, you know, who doesn't think in that kind of way, and they go, "Well, that could have happened anyway." Right, and it, and and most likely that it could. Yes. Now, I would like just to to define something with you, and with you guys. I would like to define the term miracle. What is a miracle? Please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, um, a miracle is something that goes completely against the the laws of nature or of science. Okay. So, basically... Yeah. 
is giving birth a miracle? And I deliberately say giving birth because uh, because you know that's people people so so often they say what like this yes. like the miracle of birth. The miracle of birth. But is it is it a miracle? It's not a miracle. Let me tell you, it's not a miracle. If we say that a miracle is, you know, the, and, and, I, and I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. A, a miracle is something that goes against the laws of nature. Okay? A birth is something that, that, which is in nature. Right? It's one of the laws of nature. Maybe there's a difference between the miracle of life, which is given to us by God, and the miracle that happens once we are living. Okay, elaborate a bit more. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, what am I trying to describe? Because there's, there's no doubt that, in my mind, that, that birth, the fact that I'm alive, the fact that you are alive, mm -hmm. is, is a miracle. Is it, it or is it, it not? Like, it is, because God created us out of nothing. That's a miracle. I don't think so. I don't. I don't think that's a miracle because, you know, we were we were created like all 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 humankind was created. You know, it's uh, and 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 you know that's it's it's part of nature. We could say that the it's part the, of nature now. Or we could say that maybe maybe you know like creation of of the of Adam, mm -hmm. that was a miracle. Because oh, we, we could we could say maybe that there was no nature even back mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. When I when I when That's I use the term miracle, when I when I gil, gil, yeah. when I use the term miracle, for example, I'm holding this cup, I'm gonna let it go, and it's not gonna mess your floor. <laughs> okay, it's going it's going to it's going to stand in the air. That's a miracle. Right. Okay, the sea being torn in half, that's a miracle. A, 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 um, ten plagues in Egypt, that's a miracle. Mount Sinai event, that is miraculous, right? They could see the voices. We quite often use that term. Um, what about... That is a miracle. E Eliyahu, Eliyahu the prophet on Mount Carmel, you know, he was praying, mm. boom, fire falling from mm -hmm. heaven, and, and, and everyone, wow, that's a miracle. Mm -hmm. um, Especially as it was all covered in water. Yeah, and, 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 and jo Joshua bin Nun making the sun, and the, making the sun stand still in the sky so it doesn't, it doesn't, so evening doesn't begin because they were in the middle of a mm -hmm. war. That is a miracle. And we have, we have like a lot of miracles, you know, during, you know, throughout our, our history and which is great because we we talk a lot as, uh, as Christians about the miracles that that Jesus did when people are healed like he healed so many people um, and for instance we have a record of him walking on the Sea of Galilee on the water for example, so so so, so we something would, we like that, that is is what I would define a miracle. Right. Okay, not necessarily the thing itself, but because. No. But if so, what what do we call it when, say, somebody has been in a wheelchair for several years in their life, mm -hmm. and somebody prays for them, and they're healed. Like I know of two people. I actually know them personally where this mm -hmm. has happened, and they've they've got up out of that wheelchair. And okay, never that could be. Okay, so, okay, so that could. Would be we a, call that a miracle? I think so because I mean, if if it really, I mean, if there is no, you know, if that's really the case, you know, they they were, you know, they if that's really the case, you know, just by, uh, um, you know, pro you know, if, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You know, to be to to be to be honest, I'm not sure. Okay, let's say it's closer to a miracle mm -hmm. than, than... For me, that's closer to a miracle than uh, birth. Okay? Do you know what I mean? I just, I'm just I, trying no, to put it in... I, I just trying to put a definition because I want to ask a question. And for that question, we have to be in agreement about, you know, what is exactly a miracle. So what okay? would be different, so let's, let's say, uh, what would be different would be if that person that was in the wheelchair, mm -hmm. uh, somebody said, hey, we think... We can. We think we can fix what's broken here. For me, they go to for me, a very, they have surgery for and me, it's successful. For, that's not a miracle. That's not a miracle. That's not a miracle. For me, a miracle would be that that chair would start flying in the air. <laughs> that is a miracle. Okay. <laughs> For me, but the person did okay. So the, the person is all of a sudden walk. Peter Pan, and he can fly <laughs> in like. Do you know what I mean? That is a miracle. Peter Pan is a miracle. That's the message of this webcast. No, 
<laughs> but but do, do, do you know what I mean? Yes. Okay. Um, no, I'm, 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 I want to ask. I want to ask. How do we want to live our life? Do we want to live it in a miraculous way? You know, do I want like fire to fall out, fall down from heaven all around me all the time? Do I want all this, or do, or do I want my life to be run in nature? And I'll, you know, maybe I'll ask it differently. How does what does God want? Does He want us to know Him through His miracles, or does He want us to know Him through this incredible? so-called nature that he created what does he what does he want what do you think so it's a, this is a little bit like the question that you asked at the last webcast I, which i can't remember exactly how you worded it but talking about um is it better to is it better to be alive what was it do you remember no Oh, come on. <laughs> I need to watch it. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's not going to work. So you have to go back and watch what that was, and, <laughs> well, and then you'll see we, what I'm talking about, because neither do. of us can remember it exactly. <laughs> um, uh, so you're, you're, the, the question you're, you're putting here is... Is, is how, is what does God yeah. want? Yes. What, what, what does he prefer? Does he prefer us to be astonished, mm -hmm. astonished, struck by his miraculous nature mm -hmm. or like, like his his miraculous deeds okay or does he or or is he interested more in us knowing him and mm -hmm. achieving him and walking in his path just by in finding him yeah. through the laws of of nature which i don't like the word nature to call it because it's yeah, not the it's laws not of nature easy. it's a lot it's, it's his that. it's yeah. that and and i think that if i think i think we can answer yeah. that st statistically i i have um it, it Your question makes me think of um, of something that, especially during the during the whole period of of the renewal that was going on, um, and the sort of we would talk a lot about uh, seeking God's face and not His hand, and it's a little bit the same hmm. thing. It's like um, I, I want Him for who He is, not for what He. Is going to give me, so it's a little bit. If we're always looking for demonstrations of His power, even though I'd love it for fire for, to fall to help from to fall from heaven, but if that is my focus in following Him, I don't think that's. I don't think that's what He wants. I mean, and, for for me personally, and, but I do think He wants us to seek Him His fullness, and that could include that. So I wouldn't want to say. Don't send your fire from heaven. No, I don't of need course it. not. No, no, it's not yeah. that. Of course we yeah, need yeah. it. But it's, it's not that. But I'm saying that I, I'm talking about. I don't talk about like individuals. Right? I'm talking about yeah. like humanity. We can say, we can definitely say that you know the human soul is more um, is more impressed by 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 these miraculous deeds mm -hmm. okay you know like fire falling from heaven yeah, yeah. okay it's it, it creates an impression it takes you you know it's 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 it, it gets to you and, and okay and that's it yeah. but but the, but the idea is to i think the, the idea is like to walk daily in his path mm -hmm. and to see him and to and finally to be able to be impressed you know by the fact by the fact that I don't know this cup, for example. Mm -hmm. You know, it has all these little things like inside that we can't even see, like like electrons and neutrons and, and atoms and stuff and stuff and stuff, which which makes it a cup, in the end. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 the fact that, and the fact that there is air and the sun. You know, the sun is, but that's not that's a miracle. Okay, that's not. I mean, when the sun rises every morning, that's not a miracle. That's how God planned His world. Mm. Okay, that's how that's what He planned for us, so and we need to we need to see Him in that. But it's not a miracle. It's not breaking. It's not breaking the laws. You know, it's almost. I think, and I'll say something very maybe harsh. I think it's rude to ask for God's miracles. He planned this world to. He planned this world in a way that we would see him through, 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 through the through the regular things. Mm -hmm. Statistically, we don't see miracles happening every day, right? 
Not even in a hundred years. I mean, I mean, miracles like we define, like we've just mm-hmm. defined it, right? So he clearly wants us to seek him and to see him in that, in everything that he planned for us. Mm-hmm. If we, why do we need, because of, our weak, because of our weaknesses and because of our lack of faith, you know, he needs to break what he planned and he needs to go against what he planned for this world to be and to impress our souls. Interesting. Yeah. And, and, and I, I think you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. I, I get it. Um, it's, in, it's interesting because um, it's one of the things that, uh, that Jesus, one of the things Yeshua said was, um, he, was he was talking to, to the people around him and said, you know, you're always seeking for a sign, but I won't give you a sign. And then he, and he goes on to... I want to, I want to read something to you. Mm-hmm. I want to read something to you, and that is from Exodus. Okay, only two verses. Um, okay, these are two verses in Exodus, Exodus 6. Okay, mm-hmm. we're going to be reading uh, verse 2 and 3. Do you want to find it? Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's Exodus 6, verses 2 and 3. Uh-huh. Okay, so the verses go like this. Vaidaber Elohim el Moshe, Vayomer elav ani Adonai. Okay, God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord. Vaera el Avraham, el Yitzchak ve'el Yaakov be'el Shaddai, u'shmi Adonai lo nodati lahem. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. But by my name, the Lord, I did not make myself known to them. Now, what does that mean? Do you know? Now, that means that basically God's name, you know, he has various ways, in, in various names, you know, in, mm-hmm. in, in the Hebrew text. And so, so he's saying to Moshe, and we need to just maybe, maybe, some, maybe a short thing about, you know, the context in which this was said. You know, God is sending Moses, the burning bush, Moses, Moses doesn't want to go. So God in the end, he, so Moses in the end says, okay, okay, I'll go, I'll go. So he's going to Egypt, okay? Mm-hmm. He's going to Egypt and he's meeting Aaron and they go and they stand in, in, they stand in front of uh, Pharaoh. And, you know, Moses is certain that, you know, once he's going to do the little trick with the, sna- with the staff becoming a snake or a crocodile, whatever, <laughs> and then, he'll, then, then that's going to do it, right? Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to be gone and then I'm going to be gone and his mission is over. That didn't happen, right? So God basically... Uh, made Pharaoh's heart heavier. That's that's how that's what the Hebrew text mm-hmm. has, mm-hmm. and and he doesn't send the, the, Jew, the Israelites, and he also he, he he makes work harder for them, right? He gives them the same deadline, but with uh, with more uh, with more to do, mm-hmm. and uh, and then so he comes out and he's frustra- and Moses is frustrated, and you know the Israelites are like throwing tomatoes at him. You know what are you doing? And like it, it, we 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 better off without you. You know just making things worse. Mm-hmm. Moses doesn't know what does God want from him, and then that verse comes, and he's saying, you know I am, God. You know uh, uh, God spoke to Moses, and he told him, I am the Lord. Can we the better Elohim? Elohim. That's God, I guess, I don't know. Ani Adonai. And he's giving his full name there, and that's a name we don't even, we don't even pronounce, we don't even say it with our lips. Mm-hmm. And, and meaning, uh, that name of mine, Elohim, that is a name in which I lead the world, you know, according to the laws that I've, that I've decided, you know, like things that the things are as they are. But, but I, I, I want to tell you, I am also, and then he's saying, and then, then God is saying his real, his, his other name, his miraculous one. Mm. And I didn't tell that to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They didn't know me as that God. They only knew me as El Shaddai. Okay? Natural, you know, coincidence stuff. And, um, and, and that is basically the key, you know. So God has this miraculous side and he also has this natural I'd say side and I think that you know just looking at things and and this wonderful world that he has planned for us you know we need to work hard this is one of our challenges to work hard and to study and to and to pray and and to follow in his path just just so we can see him in all these things which are not miracles you know things that in the day like everyday thing everyday thing Mm -hmm. That he is great. Right? That he is great, yeah, in all these things. Yeah. But but would you agree too though that um, 
the, it, I mean, I, I, I totally, I get this because I think sometimes we're looking always for the, the things that are outside of that. And as you said, I mean, you said it sort of in a strong way, it's almost rude, but it's, it's dishonoring to God to, to, um, to kind of say that's not enough. It's not enough what you've done. It's not enough that you've created us. It's not enough that you've put all this before us. And yet we see we also live in a very, very broken world. And there are times when it feels like we need to cry out for God to send his fire from, from, from heaven. and Because um, um, it feels like nothing else could do it, right? Yes. But if he doesn't do it, then obviously there is... And if it's not time, there will be a time, I guess. But I'm not sure that that time is, a good, is necessarily a good time for us. Mm-hmm. Maybe it shows our weaknesses. Mm-hmm. It, it, it just... You know, yeah, and it, uh, well, you know all these, all these, all these great, great miracles happen in the Bible to people who have been in slavery right. for so long. Their their spirit was broken. Mm-hmm. They didn't have any spirit. They had to have the sea torn in half mm-hmm. because otherwise they wouldn't go. You know, they wouldn't go. Then, then they had to, you know, to get to know. God's hand, mm-hmm. you know, as it's, it, mm-hmm. if we can even, you know, understand what that is. Mm-hmm. And there was just no other way because their spirit was broken, but ours isn't. Now, we are, I'm, I'm saying this very, in a very full way, like, I'm really in peace with what I'm about to say. We are in a, we are in a higher point than, 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 than how they were. You know, people say, you know, they've seen all these great things, you know, they were like so righteous and, and all that. No. Mm-hmm. We are in a higher point than that because we can talk about this cup, you know, for example, it's a very simple thing and right. still be able to see, you know, God's way in it, yeah. you know. Well, and the fact, so that they say, saw, they the fact that they saw all those miracles... And yet, you know, days after they're out and they're saying, you know, we want to go back to Egypt. I mean, yeah, you know, to take us back. After Mount Sinai, so like, yeah. just Mount Sinai. I mean, I mean, after after the the, the terror of the Red Sea, right? And uh, where's the food? They were like, <laughs> you know, where's the food? After Mount Sinai, where's the meat? You know, it's like so ungrateful. So uh, because it came very fast to them, you know, it it wasn't supposed to build their faith gradually. This has a this has an intention, and God intended to to change their mm. spirit at once, so so that so that He would have something to work with. Right. But but obviously it wasn't perfect. I mean, the ideal thing is to is to build your faith gradually, and and to get to know a bit more and a bit more and a bit more, and 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 that's how you grow, not by you know fire fell from heaven. Fine. Yeah, okay. So it impresses you now, but who said that next week you're going to remember that? That's really true. And um, and because of this, because this month has Purim, and Purim is you know we we say this like prayer over the miracles, but 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 in the end of the day, I mean, if we, if you read it, then it wasn't so miraculous compared to other stories we've had in the Bible. Right. Well, it's it, this is so great because um, I think we are, uh, you know, these are the kinds of things that we we get to talk about when we have our. Our weeks together in in um, in Jerusalem and and I I I love being able to talk about these things without you you know they're all it, it's it's a subject that I don't think either one of us could say okay I've got it all figured out and I know I know what a miracle is and I know what it isn't and I know when it's okay to ask God for one more and when it's not it's not it's not like that and. Um, uh, and I, th- I think it's just so good to, to sort of struggle with these these kinds of things. I, I, the thing that I've really got out of what you were, what you said this evening, um, is is just that sense of how, to, to constantly be asking God almost to go against the very thing that He's created for us, the very thing that He's put in place, and the things that He's put in place. Um, you know, maybe we we need to start to learn to really, really appreciate those things even more. <laughs> not not to not ask for the others, I, um, but to appreciate those things even more because maybe this maybe the stuff I'm missing here 
I mean, I've, I've never put a cup on the table and considered just how amazing that is, that God is... Yeah, and so, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not mean, like it's I like, get up in the morning no, and I see no, my no. cup of coffee and I'm like, wow, God, how did you do no, that? No, no. It's not really that. But no, but I, I, I hear The it. idea it's of us being able to, to be excited from the simple mm-hmm. things, by the simple exactly. things that he created for us, you know? Yes, yeah. It's like, and, and of course, if we believe that he's leading, you know, he's taking us hand in hand, you mm-hmm. know, if we believe in that, so and we are, mm-hmm. and we do, you know, he's taking us hand in hand. Then it falls very, it fall, it goes back to you know to the psalm we've read at the beginning. You know, we read mm-hmm. um, you know Psalm 139, mm-hmm. in which and there is a verse there that I love very much. But you know, if even if I go very very high, mm-hmm. I will see you. And then when I go down, mm-hmm. like, like you're there too. <laughs> yeah, you're there too. And how could that be? Because he's basically taking yeah. us, you know, hand in hand. Yeah. We can't deny him. We can't take him out of our lives. Yeah, yeah. We can't. We just can't. So mm-hmm. it's um, so it's quite obvious that the things that we're getting, you know, we're get we are being fed back. You know, we're getting feedback mm-hmm. from him. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, as we go along by by things that that can look they may look as a coincidence, or but they're not. Right. He's planning the whole thing. He has a I mean he has a whole schedule for us. Right. And uh, it would, it's just our job to re- recognize that and and to follow. Fantastic. So I love it. Wow. Okay, we need to draw to a close, right? We yep. we do. Oh, it's <laughs> so fast. It's like, um, so uh, before we before we sort of sing our our last song, uh, do we want to just remind people that there's still another month, and you can still you can still register to come and join us in March, 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 March sixth to the thirteenth. In Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, and uh, we promise not, you, we promise you a whole week of great conversations like this, <laughs> as well um, as. Uh, if not, there is another one after that. We're yes. going to be having another one in November, but uh, mm-hmm. that's kind of exciting. Very so much. Well, we'll let you know about that. Very much, really and soon. we'll probably meet in a month's time. <laughs> we will. This is true. So uh, before I go. Before I go, well, before I'm up, before our next now week. Mm-hmm. Right before our next now week. And before I go to England. Yes. So, lots coming up. Lots coming and, uh, up. Let's sing our Mashiach song. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to tell them the translation of this? <laughs> of the words? Yeah. I'm really bad in translations. Okay, Come on, you so know. <laughs> How long have you been knowing me? coming of the Mashiach and the coming of the Messiah and even though he's delayed is it even though even if he is delayed or even though he's delayed even though he may be delayed he may be delayed even yes. though he may be delayed yet I will still wait for him yeah. so called delayed yeah he'll come right on time it's just